You know, a number of years ago, in Crystal Palace in southern London, a Baptist church service was coming to a close. And a stranger at the back of the church, he raised his hand. And he said, excuse me, pastor, can I share a little testimony with you? Well, this was very unusual, but the pastor looked at his watch. He said, okay, you've got about three minutes. Well, the man proceeded. He said, well, I've just moved to this part of London from another part of London, and I came from Sydney in Australia. And I was doing some shopping down George Street. We're on George Street right now. Now, George Street runs from the, from the rocks, which is where we are now, out to the business hub and onto Chinatown. And as I was walking down George Street, this elderly gentleman stepped up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, sir, are you saved? If you die tonight, are you going to go to heaven or hell? Well, he gave me a leaflet and I was quite shocked by this whole question. And when I was on British Airways flying home to the UK, I was really puzzled. I found a friend of mine that lives in this part of London and thank goodness he's a Christian and he led me to Christ. And I like to fellowship with this church. And now Baptists, they love testimonies like this. And they all welcomed him and applauded him into the fellowship that day. Now, one week later, that pastor from Southern London flew to preach at a Baptist church in Adelaide in Australia. And a woman came to him for counseling. And he just tried to establish where she stood with Christ. And she said, well, I was visiting friends of mine that live in Sydney. And I was doing a little bit of shopping down George Street when an, a gentleman stepped out of a shop doorway and handed me a leaflet and said, excuse me, madam, are you saved? If you die tonight, are you going to go to heaven or hell? Well, I was really confused by the question. Nobody had ever asked me a question like that before in my life. And when I went home to Adelaide, I went to visit this church on the block where I live, and I asked the pastor, what does this mean? He was the one that explained to me about Jesus Christ, about what he'd done for me in the cross. I gave my life to Christ. And you know what? I'm a Christian, but I've been struggling with my faith over the years. But now, this pastor from southern London has heard the same testimony twice from two parts of the world. A week later, he flew to preach at the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Perth. And the senior elder took him out for lunch after the service. And over lunch, the pastor asked his elder, how'd you get saved, mate? And the elder explains, well, I grew up in the church from the age of 15 through Boys Brigade. I never made a commitment to Christ. I just jumped on the bandwagon like most other people but I grew to a place of influence in the church because of my business ability. And one business outing took me to Sydney. I was doing some shopping down George Street when this spiteful, obnoxious man came up to me, handed me this leaflet, you know, cheap junk, and he accosted me with the question, excuse me, sir, are you saved? If you die tonight, are you going to go to heaven or hell? I tried to tell him I'm a Baptist elder, but he wouldn't listen to me. I was seething with anger as I was flying home on Qantas back to Perth. And I found my pastor to get a little bit of sympathy from him, but my pastor agreed. He said, I've been worried about you too for years, knowing that you've never had a real relationship with Christ. Well, I'm telling you, only three years ago, my pastor led me to Christ, and I'm telling you, I'm saved. But now, this is the third testimony that he's heard, all the same, being reached by this man down George Street. One week later, this, this pastor from southern London was preaching at the Keswick Convention in the Lake District. He shared the three testimonies. And at the end of the service, four senior pastors came forward and they said, well, we were saved by that guy down George Street between 15 and 25 years ago, respectively, giving us a leaflet and asking us the same question. A week later, the pastor then flew to a similar Keswick convention, but in the Caribbean, but this time to missionaries. And again, three missionaries came forward, elderly missionaries, and they said, well, we were saved by that guy down George Street between 10 and 15 years ago, respectively. Again, giving us a leaflet and asking us the same sort of question. On the way back to the UK, he first stopped outside Atlanta, Georgia, in a place called Albany. He was preaching at a naval chaplain's convention to over 1,000 chaplains. And after spending a little time teaching and revving up those chaplains, he spent a little time with the chaplain general. And over a simple meal, he just asked the chaplain general, how did you become a Christian? How did you get saved, mate? And the chaplain explains, well, I was rating on a United States warship and we were doing exercises in the South Pacific and we docked in Sydney Harbour for replenishments. We hit King's Cross with a vengeance. I got blind drunk, I got on the wrong bus, I got off at George Street. And I saw this man, he looked like a ghost. He came up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, sailor, are you saved? If you die tonight, you're going to go to heaven or hell. And he gave me a leaflet. The fear of God shook me sober and I ran back to the ship and I found the chaplain to ask him what this means and the chaplain led me to Christ that night. I tell you, I later studied for the ministry 
and today we're leading over 1,000 chaplains and we're bent on winning Albany for Christ. About eight months later, this pastor from southern London found himself preaching in a remote corner of northeastern India. He was preaching to over 5,000 missionaries. And after spending three days of revving up those missionaries, he spent a little time with the missionary in charge. He was a humble little man that took him to his humble home and over a very simple meal, he just asked him, whatever made you quit Hinduism? And this missionary explains, well, I, I, I was in a very privileged position because I used to work for the Indian diplomatic mission. And I'm so grateful for the forgiveness of sins that Jesus Christ offers because if people knew what I got up to as I was traveling around the world by myself, I'd be very ashamed. But one bout of diplomatic service took me to Sydney and I was walking down George Street, laden with parcels and presents and toys from my friends and my family, when a very polite gentleman walked up to me, tapped me on the shoulder and offered me a leaflet and said, excuse me, sir, are you saved? If you die tonight, you're gonna to go to heaven or hell. I was shocked and confused by the question, but when I went home to India, I asked the Hindu priest what this means, but he had no answers to offer me. But he said, just to satisfy your curiosity, why don't you go and visit the Christian mission house at the end of the street and ask him what it means? Well, that was fatal advice because I saw that missionary and that missionary led me to Christ that day. I quit Hinduism. I later trained and studied for the ministry. And today we're leading over 5,000 missionaries and we're seeing revival take place. Over the past 10 years, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people come to Christ. The story comes to a close where this pastor from southern London is preaching in Gymea, a southern suburb of Sydney. And one of the first questions he asks the local Australian pastor is, do you know a man that's walking up and down George Street handing out leaflets and asking people this question? Because I've gone all over the world and I've heard this man's testimony being shared everywhere. And the pastor said, well, yes, I do. His name's got to be Mr. Jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R. And I don't think he does that anymore because he must be too old and too frail by now. He said, do you know him? Do you know where he lives? The pastor said, yes, I do. Well, I want to meet him. Well, two nights later, they went around to Mr. Geno's apartment. And there he was, this tiny, old, frail man. They were in his front room relaying the story. Somebody did a little calculation that through Mr. Geno's ministry, over 146,100 people had become Christians because of him. Tears were running down Mr. Geno's cheeks. He said, let me tell you my side of the story. I've been doing this ministry for a little over 40 years. And before that, I was serving on an Australian warship and I lived a reprobate life but at one point when my life hit the wall in a crisis there was only one man that was there for me. I made life for him a literal hell. He was a Christian but he shared Jesus Christ with me in a very simple way and the change in my life was as quick as night to day in 24 hours and I was so grateful for what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for me in the cross. I was determined to serve him in some way. I was aware that the Lord Jesus commanded his followers to go into the world and share the good news with all creation, but I was a bit hesitant to explain that. I didn't know how to, but I was certainly willing to give out leaflets to people just to explain the message and ask them a simple question. The best place to do that in my retirement years was George Street, because I had so many rejections, but there were lots and lots of people that would take those leaflets and go their own way. But in 40 years of doing this, I've not heard of a single person coming to Christ until today. I have not heard of one single person coming to Christ until today. Now that's got to be commitments, don't you think? That simple, non-charismatic, non-outgoing guy. He was maybe a little bit too hesitant to share the message himself, but he was certainly willing to give out leaflets and explain the message and ask people a simple question, a simple challenge. And he reached more people than any of us could ever imagine. Two weeks later, on the 8th of May, 1977, Frank Jenner died. Now, can you imagine the reward he went back to in heaven? Can you even imagine the celebration and the fanfare and the red carpet when God's good and faithful servant came home? And I doubt you'll ever see a picture of Mr. Jenner in Charisma magazine or Billy Graham's Decision magazine, as beautiful as those magazines are. But his name was famous in heaven. Here is a man that was so grateful for his salvation. He was so grateful for what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for him on the cross. He was desperate to share his faith with as many people as possible, never focusing on the fruits, on the numbers. His focus was on the roots. It was on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was grateful. How grateful am I? How grateful are you?